outdoor kitchen. You may have heard the expression outdoor living. In residential landscape design, we're often designing spaces that mirror the way we live indoors, especially the kitchen. An outdoor kitchen is probably one of the most requested features in residential landscape design. The common components of an outdoor kitchen include a counter, storage, a place to cook, i.e. a grill, even refrigerator and sink. They can have integrated bar seating and are generally stylized to complement the existing architecture. Much like inside the home, an outdoor kitchen becomes a gathering space and a focal point. In lesson 9.1, you learned how to create a pergola, which you can think of as the walls and ceiling of your kitchen. Now let's design that kitchen and your room will be complete. Before we begin, I wanted to share some advanced scenes that include outdoor kitchens created using Vectorworks. Know that these examples took time and practice, but at this point in your development, you should have learned many of the skills to achieve these same results. Let's start by opening a blank document from your template, or you can take lesson 9.1 and resave it as 9.2 Outdoor Kitchen. In addition, in preparation, download the Outdoor Kitchen Symbols file I saved for you on D2L and download that to your computer. Once back in Vectorworks, from your Resource Manager settings, choose Browse a Document and select that Outdoor Kitchen Symbols file to temporarily load the file into your Resource Manager. Now let's create a few layers to help with organization. You'll need one for the line work as well as one for the kitchen base, the kitchen counter, and appliances. There are general standards for sizing outdoor kitchens, and I've included a wonderful reference by an appliance manufacturer called Kalamazoo, which offers helpful functional sizing guidelines. For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to assemble a very basic kitchen, but I encourage you to try your hand at experimenting with other configurations. Activate the line work layer. While in top plan view, let's draw a rectangle that's eight feet wide by 30 inches that we'll use to build our outdoor kitchen base walls. The, this depth is typical for outdoor kitchens to accommodate a grill and a few appliances. The length is determined by the appliances, extra workspace in between, and any additional requirements such as a bar. So between eight feet and 10 feet wide is a good default if your client just wants a few basic elements. The box I just drew had a white fill and I removed it so our next step is visible. In the Basic Tools palette, select the Offset tool. In the Mode bar, select Offset by Distance and Duplicate and Offset. Click on the Preferences. We want our counter to be slightly larger than the base, so 2 inches is a good number to offset by distance. We also want to select Duplicate and Offset and Offset from Nearest Edge. On a rectangle, smooth corners will create a slightly rounded corner. Close open curves is fine, but since it's already a closed rectangle, this option is not really necessary. Click OK. Next, click your mouse anywhere outside the box to commit to the new rectangle two inches larger. If you would clicked inside, the rectangle would have been two inches smaller. Next, let's use our line work to create the 3D model. We'll start with the kitchen base. I created a class in advance with the texture for the stone veneer, and that way when I create the new wall, it will already have the attributes I want. Before I convert the shape, I'll go to the view bar and change from none to veneer class I created so that my new walls will take on the attributes automatically. Select the first inner rectangle and go to landmark, create objects or shapes, and choose wall and then select offset right to contain the outer edge of the wall and thickness on the inside. Deselect delete source shape so you can reuse the line work later if desired. Click OK. Move your new walls to the kitchen base layer in the OIP. I see that my wall height defaulted to 10 feet and a typical kitchen height is three feet high, so I'll adjust this in the height field in the object info palette before moving on. 
Now let's develop the kitchen counter. Select the outer shape in your line work layer. This time we're going to turn it into a hardscape. You could build this outdoor kitchen using the extrude method, but I prefer using hardscapes and walls because they offer more features and more flexibility in the design process. Before we begin the transformation, I created a separate class using a granite texture I found in Vectorworks library. In the view bar, I'll select this class. Okay, let's turn this shape into a hardscape. Change the fill to a solid. This step is critical to enable textures to be visible after transformation. Then go to Landmark, Create Objects from Shapes, and this time select Hardscape. Select Show Properties and keep Delete Source shaped Shapes unchecked. Configuration should be Boundary. Under Draw 2D, Joint Pattern is None. I'll select Granite class I created, but as a reminder, there are multiple ways to control the attributes of a hardscape, and you can also manually apply textures to hardscapes in the OIP settings by switching the main area class to hardscape class. Under Draw 3D, change the 3D type to Slab. Click on Main Area Components. Change the datum to Top of Component. Now edit the component. Name this Granite Counter. I'm going to use the Granite class I created and set my thickness to 2 inches. And you change the Texture class to Class Texture. In the 2D view, I'd like a dark solid gray, so I'll change that here in the Section Fill. Click OK three times to return to the main design area. Now that I've corrected the issue and updated the attributes, let's move this shape to the kitchen counter layer. We also need our counter to sit at the top of the kitchen base. So with the object still selected, go to Modify, Move, Move 3D. Since our base is three feet high and the counter's two inches, let's move this three feet plus two. Click OK, and let's check out our progress in 3D before adding the appliances. Return to a top plan view and change the active layer to Appliances. Let's add a grill and a sink from the Outdoor Kitchen Symbols file you added to the Resource Manager under the Browse document. You can simply drag and drop these into your curtain file. Let's start with the grill. I'll place this where I think it could be ideal with room to have workspace on either side. I will set back the grill but I'd like the knobs to extend a few inches beyond the edge of the counter. If I look at this in 3D, it seems the symbol was designed originally at the bottom Z level. Switch to a front view and use the Move by Points tool to manually adjust this height. Using the flyover tool, I see this could still use a little tweaking. I'll switch the view to right and make the final adjustment. Return to top plan view and let's add the under mount sink using drag and drop again from the resource manager. I'll set the sink back further than the grill, knowing that during installation it will need to rest behind the kitchen base wall to accommodate for the plumbing. Let's have a look at it again in 3D. Okay, this symbol was probably created with the height already elevated, so I can see the faucet rising above the counter. However, since it's an undermount basin, we need to cut a hole in the surface of the counter. To make the cutout precise, let's grab the original 2D polygon from the sink. Return to top plan, select the sink, right click to edit the 2D components. The shape I'm looking for is the outer rim of the sink. Select this and copy it to the clipboard. Exit symbol. Now paste the shape, making sure Snap to Object is turned on in the snapping palette, reposition the shape over the sync symbol, 
Hold down Shift to select the counter, then right click to clip surface. Delete the shape and switch to 3D to see the cutout is revealed. However, I see there is an issue now. I didn't position the sink far enough back to clear the wall. This is easy enough to adjust. First, I'll reposition the sink about three inches and then I'll edit the hardscape to match. Select the sink and choose Modify, Move, Move in the Y field, enter three inches, click OK. Now select the countertop, right click, edit path, select the shape and under modify, edit polyline and select the outline of the sink. And once again, choose modify, move and in the Y field, enter three inches. Now exit polyline, exit path and there you go. Using this method, you can always edit and reshape a complicated hardscape. In the next video, we'll add storage to the walls of the outdoor kitchen.